Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for the decision we have in our hearts that as for us and our families, we are going to serve you. And we are praying that your grace and power will confirm that decision in Jesus' name. We pray that every hindrance in our way that will hinder us from really fully serving you to the fullest capacity you remove from our ways in Jesus' name. And we pray that as we serve you, the blessing of service will come upon every one of us. Lead us this day. Teach us your word. And let the word bring wonderful things into our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Already we are receiving testimonies of the effect of the wonderful things the Lord has been teaching us this month. And yet we know that according to the promises of God, there are still a lot of testimonies that will come. Because we know that every one of us will receive a touch of the Lord in our families through these messages in Jesus' name. Now, today is the last Sunday in the month. And we're concluding the series on marriage and the family to start a new series next Sunday, July. And as we come to the conclusion of the marriage series, I want to read to you from John chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. Gospel according to St. John, chapter 2. From verse 1 to verse 11. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus says unto him, They have no wine. Jesus says unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother says to the servants, Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three fuckings apiece. Jesus says unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he says unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the, wa the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and says unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. As we come to the conclusion of the marriage series, we want to take this passage and learn from the passage what the Lord will have us to know about 
what the Lord will do in our marriages or in our families when the Lord is allowed to be at the center of the whole. The passage itself is a surprise to Bible students, it's a surprise to believers, and it's a surprise to people that lived in the days of Jesus Christ. Now because as you think about it, Jesus Christ had been in, his, in the home of uh, Joseph and Mary for now 30 years. And he had been preparing 12, um, about um, 18 years before that time, he had told the mother and Joseph, why are you looking for me? Don't you know I must be by my father's business? And they were watching him to know where he will carry out his father's business. And John the Baptist had gone out. And John the Baptist had been the forerunner. He had been talking about this Jesus Christ. There is one coming. He is mightier than I am. Who shoots lash at? I am not able to lose. And when he comes, he will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. You know, he had been talking about this Jesus Christ. And if you know anything about um, John the Baptist, he never attended any marriage at all. Not any wedding. In fact, you know, he stayed in the wilderness. Because, uh, you know, all the Pharisees, they were abusing him. They were saying, this one that is almost a hermit, he is not social. He will not, you know, just get into any community where you are having joy and love and merriment. John was not like that. And he was a very forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. And John had been preaching about this man. And John wore a type of clothes. And John ate a type of food. And he was never in a place where they were having a marriage feast like this. And he had been talking to them that this Jesus is coming. So John himself would have been expecting that Jesus would just be like him completely. And John spent all his life on preaching, doctrine, messages. And it's messages, when you had those messages, you had no time to laugh at all. You had no time to be happy at all. Because repent, the axe is laid at the root of the tree. Don't you say you are children of Abraham because the Lord is ready to bring judgment. That was his message. And then he said, one is coming. And he's going to come with fun in his hand and unquenchable fire to burn the child. And then Jesus Christ came. He left his family and was not going to go into the public ministry. And the very first place he went when he was going to, going to go into the public ministry was a marriage feast. It was a surprise to John. It was a surprise to the disciples of John that were now following the Lord Jesus Christ. And how, what a surprise it was to people that, you know, if this man is going to perform his miracle, maybe he'll get into the temple and before those high priests and the priests will work a miracle. No. You know, maybe he'll just get, uh, you know, some religious people together and gather them and say, the Messiah has come. You know, the very first, the very first miracle he performed, he performed it within the marriage setup. What a message that has for us. That Jesus gave a miracle to a marriage before he gave a message on marriage. That Jesus blessed a marriage with his presence before he uh, corrected the marriage with his preaching. That Jesus Christ manifested his power in the marriage before he ever gave a word of preaching doctrinally on marriage. He got into that marriage. There was a need in that place. And he worked out a miracle and at the beginning of miracles was just to start off a family union a marital union in the right direction that says something about marriage so dear to the heart of the Lord his father ordained it his father instituted it and he came to establish and to bless it and he came with all the support and the interest of the Son of God to bless that marriage you know, there are many things we can talk about marriage. We can, you know, lay line upon line in marriage and talk about doctrine. But Jesus started with deliverance before the doctrine. You know, we can come in marriage and we can preach a lot, preach a sermon. But Jesus manifested supernatural power rather than preaching a sermon on marriage to start with. Oh yes, the parables came later, the power first. The message came later, the miracle first. And that's what we're doing this month. We're preaching so that there will be a miracle in your marriage.
Of course, the doctrine is important, the message is important, the parables are important concerning marriage, but the power, the presence, the supernatural, the miracle, the deliverance, all for the marriage. And today as we conclude, I want to just tell you that Jesus is interested in marriage and I'm going to preach to you on when the wine finished. In this um, passage I've read to you, we're looking at what happened when the wine finished. Now, you know, a message like this, oh, you see, what sort of message is this? You've been telling us you are building the home on the rock. You've been telling us about the Father's choice for you. You've been telling us about the spirit control family. And now we are the climax of the whole thing. And you're telling us when the wine finished. Oh, yes. You know, you go to a doctor. And then he helps you one way or the other. And now you are well. And you are happy. And you are healthy. And the doctor says, don't go yet. Come. I don't expect that you will have this problem again. I don't expect that you will have any trouble again in this area. But should in case you have this problem again, this is what to do. In 10 minutes, you'll be all right. And that's the attitude we have today. That from the messages you have heard, from the prayers you have prayed, and from the prayers we have also prayed for you. I don't expect that your problem should remain. I believe that it should not be going, uh, you know, from faith to faith, from glory to glory, from grace to grace, and from better to best in your marriage. But should in case anything happens along the way. Let me tell you what to do when the wine finishes. Now, this passage, because it talks of wine, many Christians, born again believers, we read the passage and we pass over it. Oh, we say, I don't like that passage because it has a question there I don't know how to answer. You know, they tell us uh, Christians should not drink, Christians should not drink. And Jesus went to the marriage and he made water, wine. And when people ask me about that, I'm in difficulty. I don't know what to answer. So I don't like that passage. The passage is wonderful. But you know the problem? Wine with us is different with to wine with them. You know, many things have changed. Language sometimes remains the same. Those days they were using the language wine. But what they meant was totally different because at that time there was no brewery. There was no refrigeration. There was no all these chemical processes. They were not available. But today, you know, when they talk about wine, they are talking about something totally different. They are talking about something you have to advertise a lot heavily. They are talking about something that, you know, if you drink it and you drink a lot of it, you will be degraded from being a man to an animal. You will be converted in the negative sense. You will go from light into darkness. You will go from being sensible to being unreasonable when we talk about wine today. But you know, those days, it wasn't like that. Whenever they were talking about wine, it was the ordinary thing that everybody drank in place of water. There was no pipe on water at all at that time. So what they drank was the unfermented juice of the grape or other things like that different from water. They called it wine. Whenever they were talking about real hot thing, they talked about strong drink. They made a very a major difference with it. But let's come back to this passage. When the wine finished. To them it was a symbol of love. A symbol of joy. A symbol of peace. You know what Isaiah said? Isaiah said, Ye that have no money, come buy, buy and drink milk and wine without price. He wasn't talking about strong drink. He was talking about all the grace and the virtue that will come out of Jesus Christ the Messiah when he comes. When I said I was saying come for the wine, he wasn't talking about something that will degrade you, something that will lead you into, you know, the, uh, into accident, into destruction, into insanity. He was talking about love, about joy. He was talking about peace. He was talking about all that Calvary will purchase for humanity. And today when I talk about when the wine finished, I'm talking about when the love has finished in the family. 
When there is no love again, what are you to do? When there is no joy again within the family, what are you to do? Oh, you say, I thank God because I've just received a miracle in my family. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But we're talking about if it happens that the love, the joy, the intimate relationship, the communication has totally broken down. What are we to do? When there is no more freedom and liberty and the whole family is in bondage and we are careful and fearful of one another, what are we to do? When the funds are not there, when the wine finishes, when the funds are finished, no money. When there is no provision, what are we to do? When the wine has finished, when everybody is sick and there is no good health in the family, what are we to do? When there is no trust and confidence, when there is no peace, when there is no sincerity and security, when there are no friends, all the friends have become enemies, when there is no fellowship within the family, when the wine has finished, what shall we do? You want to know what to do? I don't know when Daniel understood how to behave in the lion's den. But you know, if somebody called him for a message and said, I want you to know what to do if you ever get into the lion's den, oh, he might say, impossible, impossible, I will never get into the lion's den, so I don't need any lesson on what to do when you get into the lion's den. But he took the lesson, he took the lesson, and one day, they threw him in the lion's den. It was not a surprise to him at all. He must have known a message before. What to do if you ever get into the lion's den? And you know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I don't know if somebody ever gave them a lecture. What to do if you ever get into the furnace of fire? And you know there are Christians that you know put their heads in the sand and they say, I don't want to worry myself about what to do when you get into the furnace of fire. They will not listen. But you know the day came and um, they called Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and they threw them into the fire but thank God they knew what to do when they got into that furnace. They just became free and they were walking about in the fire. Now, uh, Peter must not have got a lesson before. What to do if you ever walk on the sea? I'm sure he didn't have any lesson before. And when he got on the sea, it was totally strange to him. And then he began to sing and, uh, sing and he began to cry aloud, Lord, save me. Now, what do you do? When the wine has finished. No more love, joy, intimate relationship, communication in the family. Everything has broken down. What do you do? Do you just say, well, this marriage will not continue. Let me go and marry another person. Well, the wine may finish in that one again. What do you do? Well, I will kick that one out and marry a third person. The wine may finish again. What do you do? You better learn the lesson now. When there is no communication anymore, no freedom, no liberty, no funds, no provision, no good health, no trust and confidence, no peace, no sincerity or security, no friends, no fellowship. What do you do? When the wine has finished. Now, I've read a passage to you. In John chapter 2, verses 1 to 11, and we divide the passage into four sections. Number one, the invitation. They invited Jesus Christ. And that's what I'll be telling you this afternoon. Whatever you do, whatever you don't do, whatever you have, whatever you don't have, please make sure you have invited Jesus Christ into your heart and into your family. The invitation. Number two, the intercession. Mary went to Jesus Christ and he gave him the information saying they have no wine. And when he did that, he was making intercession on their behalf. And I want to tell you that in your marriage, number one, give Jesus Christ a direct invitation. Make it definite. Invitation. Then, let there be a definite intercession. Deliberate intercession. Uh, that you really pray whenever there is trouble, whenever there is lack, when the wine has finished, let there be a determined, deliberate um, intercession. And then, there is instruction and you know mary after he had been to the lord jesus christ he went to the servants he said whatsoever he says unto you do it instruction and it was a very definite instruction and then intervention 
The Lord uh, just, you know, came in and said, put water in the, in the water pots of stone, draw out, a miracle had taken place, a divine intervention had taken place. And they drew out and it was wine. And you know that uh, if you'll just follow what I'm telling you this afternoon, it will not only affect your marriage, it will affect every area of your life. Listen to me. I'm talking about marriage, but let's change a little and talk about your place of work. Here you are under the bus. They called you into service before. They employed you. And you are making progress in that place of work for some time. Now, everything uh, just vanished. You are still there, but they don't have confidence in you anymore. And the boss is going to be complaining about everything that you do. And the boss is going to say, I don't like your work anymore. And you know that they are likely to terminate your appointment anytime. The steps to take to make everything all right is the step to take when the wine has finished. Change the scene, the situation. And think about you and your friend, just a friend. And you've been getting on well. All things are all right between you and your friend. And it appears that, you know, you had a wonderful relationship, but all of a sudden, there is, um, you know, no intimate uh, fellowship between you anymore. No trust, no confidence, no sincerity, no security, and there is no liberty that you used to have with your friend. What do you do? The same thing you do when the wine has finished. Just the same thing, the same thing. Invitation, intercession, instruction, and uh, intervention. And it doesn't matter where it is in your life. This is the steps, or these are the steps that you take in the marriage relationship, in a friendly relationship, in the um, corporate or company or secular working relationship. This is exactly what you do. Are you getting in trouble with uh, your landlord? And he's you know, already saying, well, uh, I'm not sure I'm going to keep you in this house anymore. Exactly the same thing that you do when the wine has finished. What do you do? When there is no confidence between you and that landlord now, what do you do? The same thing. Invitation, intercession, instruction, intervention. Now come back to the marriage. You're married. Suppose there is a lack of love, a lack of joy, a lack of intimate relationship in the marriage. The lack of proper communication in the marriage and there is no freedom or liberty now and you are very sorrowful of this lack within the marriage the funds are not there the provision is not there the family is now living from hand to mouth and everybody is sick there is no good health no trust there is so much doubt and fear and unbelief and lack of confidence there is no peace there is strife there is violence there is disagreement and division there is no sincerity, there is no security. And the friends have turned to be enemies and there is no fellowship. What do you do? Now John chapter 2, from verse 1, the invitation.